as you can see, we've sort of rearranged the shop a little bit. We built a temporary bench here uh, to hold some parts and I've moved toolboxes and things back there uh, to give us more room to work, put some protection on the woodworking bench and generally cleared space so we can get stuff done. And we can start working on the component parts for the engine, things like starter and the uh, generator and the air cleaner and just stuff. You know, get it cleaned up, get it ready to put together so we can work on it, get things going. You up for it, Robert? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll hop to it. Yeah. Give me a kiss for luck, Robert. Oh, well, I guess that piece. You throw your metal parts in here. Alright. Robert's got. The starter here, and this starter is old. I mean, it's obviously original to the to the backhoe, and, but we can still get replacement parts uh, for it because they were universal to other uh, starters. And as you can see, and this is where let me see, this is how it sat when it was bolted to the engine. And you can see a whole lot of rust has accumulated in there. It is uh, quite rusty and beat up. We'll see uh, if it's salvageable. Well, we'll hope it is. Robert, you wanna come pull this apart? Just pull that off. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. So the a lot of crud in here. If this, I think they call this the commuter. If this commuter is in good shape, it may be okay to clean it up and just put it back together. But then also, here are the field windings inside. There's a whole lot of rust. Amazing, you know, looking at it, you wouldn't think that this thing would even turn the engine over, but it did. So, I mean, obviously still works. Um, so, oh, that's paper. Oops. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and so it'll be a matter of uh, cleaning this up, see if we can get it to work better, and see if we need any replacement parts. Anyway. Yes. This. This part, this this part right here was up against this because there was a bunch of dirt and other stuff. I've already knocked it out for, out right here, but. It really pitted it out pretty well. So, Robert and I cleaned up this uh, starter tonight and uh, see what it would need. Now, remember. This worked. It actually turned the engine over, but I mean, as you saw, the crud inside and the rust inside of this uh, this uh, starter was so bad. It was in such poor shape that it wouldn't have been long before it just failed altogether. So, at the minimum, it needs to be rebuilt. If we can find the parts. They don't make this starter anymore, and they actually don't make rebuild kits for it anymore. However, Many of the uh, parts that go into this heavy duty starter uh, go into other starters and rebuild kits that are available. We cleaned every bit of this that we could. We sort of half took this apart and uh, tried to get in here really good and clean this up. And then we also used some of this uh, mass airflow sensor cleaner. It's good for electrical parts. And uh, as you can see, we've got one of the brush one of the arms that holds the brush uh, on for this motor is broken. And the plastic's broken, it's just sitting there. So a lot of rebuild kits will come with these replacement arms al along with brushes. Also the fields, these are called the fields, these copper windings in here. Um, and uh, the fields uh, have an insulation, uh, sort of a loose insulation that's exposed. Um, they may be okay, but one thing I did notice was that the motor itself was kind of weak. 
you know, when we use it to turn the engine over. So if we can find them, it may not be a bad idea to get some new windings for it, or new fields, I should say, uh, and put them in there. This Bendix, uh, where the starter engages the flywheel of the engine and turns it over, gears are beat, but look like they still work fine. Robert did an excellent job cleaning this up. I mean, it was, whew, it was ugly. She did a great job cleaning it up. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome, thank you. It's a good girl, girl, a good girl, Raul. This is a little scary for me because you don't want to drill through the side of the bolt into the threads on this thing, but I did this one all by myself. These are the field coils. And they wrap around the inside of the starter body like this. And they're held in by these little shoes. But each of these coils, in fact all of them, are wrapped with a fiberglass insulating tape like this. That as you can see, it's just rotten as can be. It just comes right apart. And uh, so, I mean, I just I have a whole pile of this stuff here. It's just, it's garbage. Um, and then the coils, uh, the, the copper itself, uh, has a layer of paper in between each one of these coils uh, to help insulate it. And so all of that was rotten as well. We tried to put some pa new paper in here and wrap these things. It's just too difficult to do. And so we're just gonna get a new coil for this. We'll scrap the copper, that's worth some money. And um, so we're looking at a, pretty much a total rebuild on the starter. New field coils, uh, new bushings, new brushes, all that fun stuff. And the total cost on that would be around, I don't know, 65 bucks or something like that so far, uh, which is a lot cheaper than 220 for a new starter. So this is the armature of the starter. And this is a close up. You can see where that corrosion occurred from the starter sitting in, you know, the weather for however many years. But then also call your attention to this stuff here. This is the old enamel that used to cover these windings. And as you can see, a lot of the old red stuff has come off that varnish that used to be on there. It's actually an insulation. It's a spray on varnish, but it acts as an insulation for these windings. So before we put this back together, we need to replace this varnish knot, cover the commutator, that real coppery part, because I don't want varnish on it, but the rest of this needs to be protected. And so what I got, I got a can of this spray on insulating varnish. It's just a spray on paint, basically. Spray it on like that. And it covers things up, covers all the windings, uh, covers these, um, teeth on the armature and uh, adds a nice layer of protection. It's not very pretty, but it does a job. So let's get a good coat of this stuff on here and then the armature can sit and dry and, and uh, be ready to go back together. Okay, so check it out. We, we've got to get the bushing out of this end cap here for the starter. But you can't exactly get a tool down there and pull it out. Um, we were looking online trying to figure out a good way to do this, and we found an ingenious little thing. I don't know who thought of this, but it's ingenious. You take little pieces of tissue paper and you wet them and stick, in, stick them down in the hole. And then you use a bolt or something, you know, that is almost the same size or about the same size as the uh, inner diameter of the bushing itself. And then you drive it in and it forces the bushing out. So let's show you how it works. Got the tissue paper in there already. We forced a bunch down, we hammered some, and then we forced some more down. And so here we go. Let's just see if this can just to pop out. And look at that, the bushing is just coming straight up out. That is cool. I can sort of wiggle the tissue around in there a little bit. Push it down. That keeps coming out though. But what a cool little thing. Easy way to get this out. Oh my goodness, that is 
the coolest thing. I can just see it coming up. The more you hit it. I wish I could uh, tell you what site we found this on. It was some kind of uh, forum or a log. Oh, there it is. Some pieces are still in there. Yeah, but they're just pieces, which means I can just dig them right out. Huh. There you go. A nice clean hole. Very nice. And it's clean from the tissue. Tissue cleans it up. <laughs> What's a bushing for? Uh, a bronze bushing, it, it actually acts as a bearing surface or a wear surface. Uh, in this case, for the armature to spin on. Uh -huh. And um, so it doesn't wear things out. It's usually made of bronze. And uh, the bronze is sometimes impregnated with little pieces of graphite or something like that. In the case of what's known as an oil type bushing, which is, this looks like this, what this is. A tiny little pores in this thing that are filled with graphite and things like that. So technically you don't need oil for it. Even though I think we'll just put a drop of oil in there anyway to get a good start for it. Huh. Well that's pretty nifty. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. And we'll just very gently tap it in. Very gently. Try to make it even all the way to go in. I can yeah. see it going in. That's it. That's, that's pretty good. Very nice. This is a fun, this is a fun thing. It's a fun thing? Yes, a fun project. After breaking one of the little commutator elbows, <laughs> we decided that we'd uh, replace it with the old one that was in there. I mean, it's it's still good. It just so happened that this one broke, was already broken when we pulled it out. So that's why we ordered them. But I'm glad we had that original spare here. We could do it. I, I don't know why it broke. We weren't really doing anything hard to it. It's just thin plastic and oh well. But uh, let's get this thing on now. So we don't break anything else. Doing it again. It. You're doing it again. I don't believe this. What? It broke? It broke? It's breaking it. Oh my gosh. I don't believe this. Cheap junk. So, these little uh, plastic pieces of the stator, I guess you'd call it, we ordered some new ones and both of them broke. So we have taken it upon ourselves to uh, try to restore them with a little JB weld. Um, see how it goes, but I'm really disappointed. I, it seems like the original ones were made much better. I'll tell you, that's sort of the way it goes, huh? Buying Chinese stuff, Chinese, everything's made in China now. And it's not that it's, you know, the quality has come along for things made in, in Asia, but it hasn't come along in every way and uh, not across the board, so. Awesome! Okay, here goes nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing again. Here goes nothing. Okay, and line up the holes for the thread. Let's test this starter. I'm gonna hook the negative. I'm using my truck battery for this, to this test. Just hook the negative to the uh, body of the starter. Make sure you got a good connection here because it takes a lot of amps to push this thing. And then uh, you simply, let's, first thing we'll do is we'll check the Bendix a few times, make sure that this gear pops out to engage the flywheel like it's supposed to. Okay. It looks like it does. Got pretty good torque. All right, let's check the run out. Oh, need to hold on to it. Yay! 